Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to go over all of my tweaks and settings for Windows. That's going to help get the very best performance and smoothest gameplay for Microsoft Flight Sim. Coming up on this episode of 2020 Flight Simmers. Welcome back everyone. So before we get started in today's video, I just want to go over what we're going to be covering. A lot. So there's going to be no table of contents. I urge you to take advantage of the chapter section down below and uh, you can skip ahead through this. Some of this may be repetitive, but uh, there's a lot that's going to be in this video today. So please watch the video first before you make any changes. And if you have any comments or questions along the way, Post them down below in the comments section and I will get right back to you. If the video helps you out, be sure to hit that subscribe, tick that little bell, and smash on that thumbs up button. It is greatly appreciated. So the first thing that we're going to do before we do any changes to our system today is we're going to create a system restore point. To do that, we're just going to head down here to the search bar and just start typing restore. At the very top, you will see create a restore point. We're just going to left click on that. That should open up the system protection tab. The first thing that you want to do is go down to your operating system and make sure that the protection is set to on. To do that, we're going to go down here to the configure. We're going to click on that and you're going to turn on the protection for the system. And then we're going to come down here to the max usage and just turn this to about 5%. Once we've got that done, we can hit the apply button, hit OK. Now we're all configured to create that system restore point. We're just going to go down to the create button Hit create. We're going to name it whatever we want. So we'll call this test 22. Hit the create button. Allow that to finish. All right, now that's finished. We can go ahead and hit the close button and we are all finished with the system protection. So we can just hit the okay there as well. The next thing that we need to do is to update any Windows applications. So we're just going to go down below, type in update, at the top, we're going to see here, it says check for updates, left click on that. And then left click on check for Windows updates. If it does find any updates, it should automatically update those for you. But we're going to take this one step further. So you want to click on the view optional updates. And then tick on any drop downs. This is going to provide any other updates for the drivers that you may have available. So it may be in your best interest to click on those and then download the update. So from this page, we can navigate up to the home at the very top, and this will take us to our settings home page. To get to this page normally, you would just go down here to the search, type in settings, and at the very top, the settings app will come up and it will bring you up on this settings page. There's a couple things that we're gonna do in this menu. The first thing that we're gonna do is click on the Xbox gaming tab. Once we're in here, you definitely want to make sure that you turn off the enable Xbox game bar. This will ensure that this will not drain any extra resources from the Xbox application in the background. The next thing that we can do is go down to the game mode and this is going to be hit or miss for people. And I would suggest to try this with or without game mode. I've been using game mode on. I don't really notice much difference whether I turn it on or off, but a lot of people have been having success with having the game mode on. So I would suggest to try it out and see what you think. Leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think about game mode. From the game mode tab, we can take this one step further as well. Over to the right, we have the graphics settings tab. We're gonna give that a left click. That will open up our graphics settings menu. And this is where we can turn on or off the HAGS mode or the hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. For this setting, I highly recommend to keep this in the off position as you will notice some very bad degradation in FPS quality if you have this on. Down below, we have a couple other apps here. We want to left click on any of the ones that are down here that are going to relate to our flight sim or our VR. And you want to make sure that they are set up into high performance mode. To do that, we're just going to click on the options, check high performance, click save, and again, you want to do that to anything that's going to pertain to Microsoft Flight Sim or your VR experience for Microsoft Flight Sim. Once we have that done, we can then go and click back on the home button. So now that we have finished up in the gamings tab, 
we want to head over here to the Privacy tab. In the General Options in the Privacy menu, you want to make sure that you turn all of these off. Again, this is going to help with background services that are not going to be working to help better your Microsoft Flight Sim experience. The next thing that we can do is head down to the Diagnostics and Feedback, and we're also going to make sure that we tick the required diagnostic data at the top. And then we can also go down and make sure that you turn off all of the view diagnostic data, tailored experiences. And again, this will turn off the background services for the diagnostic feedback. All right, now that we've got that done, we can head back to the home screen. The very last menu that we're going to go through here today is the apps menu. So we're just going to give that a left click. And then once we're in this menu, we want to go down to the startup. These are going to be all of the startup applications that are going to happen when Windows starts up. So you want to go through here, and I recommend to turn off any of these startup applications that you do not need. That's not going to disable them. It just will not start those up automatically when Windows starts. For instance, Microsoft Edge, I have no idea why that's on, so I'm going to make sure that is off. I don't want that running when Windows starts up. All right, so once you have gone through all of your startup applications and chosen what you do and do not want on, then we can go up here and close out of this. We are done with that for now. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to take a look at are the background applications. So to get there, we're gonna go back down to the search bar and we're gonna type in background. At the very top, you will see background apps. We're gonna go ahead and left click on that and it will bring up all of the background applications that are gonna be running in the background. You can do one of two things here. You can either turn all of the background applications off, which I do not really recommend to do for the simple fact that it's going to turn off the NVIDIA control panel. So what I do recommend for you to do is to just go through the list here and anything that does not pertain to Microsoft Flight Simulator or to the GPU or something like that or VR, then turn it off. Only keep on what is gonna make Microsoft Flight Simulator faster. The next thing you wanna do is head down to the search bar again, and you're gonna start typing in this PC. At the very top here, you're gonna see this PC application comes up. We're gonna left click on that. Once the application opens, you're gonna notice all of the different drives that you have available to you. We're gonna start with the operating system first. We're gonna highlight the drive by left clicking, and then we're gonna right click on it to open up the dialog box. At the very bottom, you will see properties, we're going to left click on that. Once that opens, we're going to head down to disk cleanup and allow it to clean up the drive for us. That's going to open up the disk cleanup dialog box for Windows. I recommend to go through and check all of the boxes over here on the left so that it can clean up old and junk information that's on your system. One of these that I do not recommend to tick is the downloaded program files because if you have anything in that folder, it's going to delete that for you. But again, that is personal preference. So I'm gonna check that, hit OK, and then hit Delete, and it will then go and clean up the entire C drive for you. You wanna do this for all the available drives that are on your system. Okay, so once that finishes, before we move to the next drive, we're gonna head over here to the Tools tab, and then go down to the Error Checking section. We're then gonna click on the check, and then scan the drive. Allow that to finish, and this may take a few minutes. All right, once that is finished, you will get a message here that your drive was successfully scanned. We can then go ahead and hit the close button. We are done in this menu. One piece of advice to everyone. A lot of people are gonna be tempted to go down below here and click on the optimize or defrag your drive. If you are using a hard drive and not an SSD, you are more than welcome to go down and click optimize and defragment your hard drive. If you are running an SSD, I highly recommend to not check this option as it will decrease the life of an SSD drive. So once we're done here, we can go down and hit the OK button. And again, you wanna do this to all your available drives. I'm not gonna waste everybody's time with this. So we're gonna move on to the next part of the tutorial. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna do is adjust some of the virtual memory for Windows. To do that, we're gonna head down to the search bar and just start typing in performance. If we look up in the list here, you will see an application that says adjust the appearance and performance of Windows. 
We're going to give that a left click and that will open up a performance tab that we can start adjusting some things for Windows. Now the first thing that I do recommend here is to set this to custom and you can set yours up exactly the way I have mine here. This is going to help really speed up the way Windows interacts and it may not directly impact Microsoft Flight Sim, but I find that it does improve the experience of Windows in general. So again, if you need to, pause the screen and then copy these down. So once we're done with that, you wanna go up here to the very top and we're gonna click on the Advanced tab. Under that, we have Processor Scheduling. We can either choose Programs or Background Services. We're gonna leave this on Programs for now. I tried Background Services and Programs. I really didn't see much of a difference. Below the Processor Scheduling, we have the Virtual Memory section. Here's where we're able to set up a custom paging file. To do this, we're going to go over and left click on the change button. If this is your first time under the virtual memory options, yours may look a little bit different. Most likely your automatically change paging file size is going to be checked. So you want to make sure that you uncheck this. Then we're going to highlight the drive that your operating system is on. And then we're going to come down and click custom size. The figures in the initial and the maximum size are all going to depend on your system specifications for the RAM. We're going to go through the three most popular RAM specs for Microsoft Flight Sim, and that's going to be 16, 32, and 64 gigs. So to start off, we're going to use 16 gig for our system specs. The equation that we're going to use to get the initial size is going to be 1.5 times 16,000 megabytes. Notice in parentheses here, this is in megabytes, not gigabytes. So for 16 gig users, you would type 24,000 megabytes in your initial size. For the maximum size, you're gonna take three times 16,000, and that's gonna equal 48,000 megabytes. That's what you'll put in your maximum size. Next, we're gonna go over the 32 gigabyte systems. For the initial size, again, it's going to be 1.5 times 32,000 megabytes, and that's going to equal 48,000. The maximum size is going to be 3 times 32,000, and that's going to be 96,000. The last and final system spec that we're going to be going over is 64 gigs of memory, and for your initial size, you're going to take 1.5 times 64,000, that's going to leave you with 96,000 megabytes and your maximum size of 3 times 64,000 is going to leave you with 192,000 megabytes. Whoa! <laughs> Once you have these set in here, you're going to go down and make sure that you hit the set tab. For me, I'm using 32, so I need to go back and make some changes real quick. Once you do have your custom paging files set, we can then go down and hit the OK at the very bottom. If your apply is lit up, you want to make sure that you hit the apply button as well. Once you hit the OK, it may also ask you to restart the system. Make sure that you do restart the system for these settings to take effect. All right, so the next thing that we're going to go over today is the Microsoft config for your startup. So again, we're going to go down to the search bar and we're just going to type in MS config. When you do at the very top, you will see system configuration app we're going to go ahead and left click on that. We're going to make some changes in this application that's going to help with our boot up process as well as take care of some stutters that you may notice inside of Microsoft Flight Sim. I have done a whole video on this application. I'll post a link down below in the comments as well as up here in the corner. You can click on that. Again, if this is your first time opening the system configuration application, it may look a little different than mine does on the first screen. Yours is most likely going to be ticked for normal startup. That'll change once we go through some of the options here. First thing that you're going to want to do is to click on the boot menu at the very top. Below here, we're going to tick on the advanced options. And then we're going to go up and click on number of processors. Again, yours will probably not be ticked, so you want to tick this box. And then you want to click on the drop down box for the number of processors that you'll have available. You always want to use the highest number available, and you may need to use your mouse scroll wheel to get to the highest number available. Click on that. Once you have, we're all set here on this page. We can go down below and hit the OK button.
From here, the next thing that I recommend is to head over to the services tab. And from here, we can disable any services that we know we do not want running. To make sure that we don't turn off anything important for Microsoft, it's always best to come down and tick on the hide all Microsoft services button here. So that'll hide anything from Microsoft and won't allow you to turn off any of the Microsoft background services. From here, I urge you to go through each of these and check and see which ones of these you may or may not ever want running. If there is a possibility that you may want to use the service, then do not untick the box. If this is a service that you know you will not ever want to use, then you want to untick the box and that will permanently disable that service for you. Once you have done that, we can hit the apply button and it will then apply all of those settings for us. If you do see something running and say, hey, I don't want it automatically starting up when Windows starts up, there is a little workaround that we can do for this. So if you go over here to the startup and then go down to open task manager, at the very top, we can go over to the services tab and then we're gonna go down to open services. At the bottom, I like to make sure that I have the extended tab open. That will also give us basic information about that service over here on the left. Again, I'm not telling you to go through and check each of these services, but if we go back to the original system configuration and go through any of these services, so for instance, let's check the Epson PMA service. We come over here, so if we scroll down to the Epson PMA service, we can see that it is manually set to start up. And we can also see that it is currently not running. But below that, we have the Epson scanner service that is automatically running and it is set to automatically start up. So for me, I do not want this to automatically start up when Windows starts up. It'll start up manually when I start the Epson scanner service. So to change the startup type from automatic to manual, you're just gonna right click on that, go down to properties, startup type, and click on manual. Hit apply, okay, and the next time you start off Windows, it will not automatically start up that service for you and it will manually have to be turned on. So this is the workaround for the system configuration. So if you don't want to permanently disable any of these, we can then come over here to the services tab and turn any of these services onto manual so that they don't automatically start up when Windows starts. All right, so once you have gone through those, and you're all set to go, we can then close out of that window. We are also done with the system configuration tab. We can click okay on that as well. Again, it may prompt you to restart the system. We're gonna exit without restart for right now. Editing your power plan. So to do that, we're gonna go down here to the search bar and just type in power. At the very top, you will see choose power plan. We're gonna go ahead and left click on that. This will open up all the different options for the power plans that we have available inside of Windows. Your power plans may be completely different than what mine are, but you wanna choose the highest power plan that you can for the best performance of Windows. If you only have high performance, choose high performance. If you have ultimate performance, choose ultimate performance. Once you have chosen the correct power plan for you, we're gonna take this a step further and we're gonna go over to change plan settings. Under change plan settings, we're then gonna click on the change advanced power settings tab. This will then open up the advanced settings menu and we're gonna go through and make sure that some of the settings in here are set correctly. The first thing that we're gonna do is go down to USB settings, check the USB selective suspend, and you wanna make sure that this is set to disable. This will disable any of the USB power savings and shutting off different USB devices while you're simming. The next thing we want to do is to come down to the PCI Express, tick on the drop down, tick on the drop down for link state power management, and you want to make sure that this is set to off. If it is not set to off, you can click on that, click on the drop down, and make sure it's set to off. Below that, we have the processor power management, tick on the drop down for that and then you're gonna tick on the minimum power state. That should be set to 100. Maximum power state should also be set to 100. Again, if any of these are not set to 100, you can click on them 
and then adjust those with these little boxes here. Once you have everything set correctly, go over to the apply, hit OK, and you have now set up and edited your power plan. We're done with this page, so we can hit the X. Google Chrome, Google Chrome. So one of the things about Google Chrome that it has a lot of good applications that you may also have installed for Google Chrome. One of the problems though is when you close out of the Google Chrome application that a lot of those background services that you have for Google Chrome stay running. So we're gonna show you how to turn all of those off right now. First thing you wanna do is to head up here to the three little dots over here in the top right. Go down to settings. Once you're in this menu, you wanna go over here to the left-hand side and you're gonna scroll all the way down to where it says system and it will open up the system menu options for you. The very first one here says continue running background apps when Google Chrome is closed. You wanna make sure that this is ticked off. When you close Google Chrome, you want to make sure that all of the background applications for Chrome also closes as well. Once you're done with that, we can then exit out of Google Chrome. All right, so the next application that we're going to go over here today is called the ISLC Cleaner. Now, this application is going to dramatically help you and manage the RAM usage and efficiency especially on your long haul flights. I have already gone through and done an entire tutorial on this application. I'll post a link down below in the description as well as up here in the top right. So if you want a complete tutorial on this application, I go through the entire process, download, install, everything you'll need to know. But I'll brush over a couple things on the application just to make sure that everybody understands what's going on with it. So the first thing that you need to do once the application is open is we need to set it up for your system specs. And what I mean by that is the lower left-hand corner, we have two sets of numbers that we can input here. The first set of numbers is always gonna be 1024 megabytes. The second set of numbers is gonna be half of your RAM spec. So I've using 32,000 megabytes of RAM, I would put 16,000 megabytes in this box. Again, I go through all the different specs on the other video, I would highly recommend to check that out and that'll give you the correct information to put here. Below that, you wanna make sure that you tick the launch ISLC on user login. That way it'll automatically start up the application for you, but it will not automatically start the application. I will go over that here in just a second. Over here on the right hand side, you wanna make sure that we're going to change the wanted timer resolution to 0.50 and then you're gonna tick the enable custom timer resolution below. At the very bottom, we have the ISLC polling rate. If you have a mid to high end PC, I recommend to turn this to 500. And if you have a mid to lower end PC, turn this to 1000. On your computer boot up, it will start the application and it will look exactly like this. The only thing that you're gonna to need to do to start the application after it is populated on your screen is to hit the start button. You do not have to hit the purge standby list, but if you do have a bunch of memory that is already in your standby, it can't hurt. Then you wanna make sure you hit the start button. And the very last and most important thing is do not exit the application. If you exit the application, it will then go away and it will not be working in the background. So make sure you go over and click the minimize and let that run in the background of your PC. Okay, so the next part of the tutorial is going to be more on some system maintenance and also cleaning up any corrupted files that may be running in the background. This is going to be using the command prompt. So to get to the command prompt, we need to go down to the search bar and type in CMD. You'll see the command prompt app appear at the top. We're going to right click on this and run as administrator. Once the command prompt opens, it should look exactly like it does here if C is your main operating system. If you do not see the system 32, then you did not open this as administrator and I recommend to go back and do it again. The first program that we're gonna run here is the SFC program. This program scans the integrity of all the protected system files and replaces any incorrect versions with the correct Microsoft versions. So like I said, this is gonna clean up any corrupt system files in the background. 
down below in the description, I will have a copy and paste section that you can copy and paste these right from the description right into your command prompt so you don't have to type all of this. To activate the SFC program and scan and repair any of the corrupted files, we're gonna type in SFC space forward slash scan now, and then we're gonna hit enter. Again, you can go down below and copy and paste this up here as well. This might take a few minutes, so allow it to finish up. Once it's done, I'll bring you guys back and we'll move on to the next part of the tutorial. Okay, so once it finishes, it will let you know if there was any issues. From In my instance, it lets us know that Windows did not find any integrity violations. So great, now we can move on to the next step of the process. Again, down below in the description, I will have the copy and paste that you can use for this one. This one's gonna be a little bit longer. All right, so we're gonna start by typing D-I-S-M space forward slash online space forward slash cleanup hyphen image space forward slash restore health. And then you're gonna hit enter. Again, this is gonna take some time, so allow this to go through the entire process. Once it finishes, I'll bring you guys back. Just to let everybody know what this is gonna be doing in the background, is this is gonna be cleaning up any problems with our disk image that Windows is using in the background. Hey, if you're enjoying the video and like to help us out further, go down below and tap on the heart icon. Your support is greatly appreciated. All right, so once that finishes, you'll be left with a this operation completed successfully, and we are all set to go with the command prompt. We can now exit out of this application, and now we're gonna be getting into more of the nitty gritty part of the tweaks for Windows. Now this section is completely optional, but that is also why we did a restore point at the very beginning of this video, as if you do have any issues, you can always restore it to what your prior settings were before implementing any of these changes. So for the next part of the video, we are gonna be using the registry editor for this. To do that, we're gonna head down to the search bar and just start typing in regedit. Once you do, at the very top here, the registry editor application will appear. We're just gonna left click on that. So for this part of the process, down below in the description again, I will have a copy and paste section for you to copy and paste these addresses to put in the very top here. So you don't have to manually go through each of these folders. I'm gonna go through this process now and I've already copied. I'm gonna go up here to the computer, highlight all of that and then hit paste and then enter. And when we do, it will bring us up to the folder that we need to get to for this part of the tutorial. So under the systems profile, we're gonna make sure that that is highlighted. And then we're gonna look over here to the right. The first thing that we're gonna take a look at is the network throttling index. Windows implements a network throttling mechanism. The idea behind such throttling is that processing of network packets can be a resource intensive task. It is beneficial to turn off such a thing for achieving the maximum throughput of your network. So that's what we're gonna be doing here. To change the value, we're gonna left click on the network throttling, and then we're gonna right click, select modify, and in this location for the value data, we're gonna type the letter F as in Foxtrot eight times. So I will go ahead and do this with everyone one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Once you have input the eight Fs, that will completely disable the throttling mechanism for your network. Then we can hit the OK button. The next thing that we're gonna do is change the system responsiveness. So in layman's terms, this setting is going to help free up some background resources that would otherwise be sitting there waiting for Windows to use. So to adjust this, we are going to again, left click on the system responsiveness and then right click, click on modify. And then we're gonna just type in one in the value 
and then click OK. What that will do now is that will, instead of holding 20% CPU for the background services, it will now only allow 10% of our CPU to be held for background services for the multimedia class scheduler. So now that we have got those done, there are two more tweaks that we're gonna do here. But we're not gonna do it in this menu. We're gonna go to another menu. So you can either go down below and click on the link down there and copy and paste above, or we're gonna go through the folders now. To get to the next menu, we're gonna click on Tasks, hit the drop down for that, and then we're gonna go to the Games folder. In this folder, we have four different changes that we're going to make. Now this will also prioritize any of your games for GPU usage. So the first thing that we're gonna do is click on GPU priority, right click, modify, and whatever value you have in here, you wanna change this to a value of eight. We're gonna click okay, and then we're gonna go down to priority. Again, highlight, right click, modify, and then we're gonna change the priority to six. We'll hit okay, and that just changed the priority of the GPU for any games that are gonna be running instead of any background applications. Underneath of that, we have the scheduling category and the SFIO priority. Again, we are going to left click, then right click, modify, and you wanna make sure that these are both set to high, H-I-G-H. Make sure that the high is spelled with a capital H to begin with. Once that's done, we can hit OK, and then you can move down to the SFIO priority. Again, hit modify, type in high, hit OK, and you are all set to go. All right, so if you stuck around till this point in the video, I really want to thank you. And to show my gratitude of appreciation, I want to bring to you an awesome application that can further optimize and enhance your Windows PC. This application will allow us to optimize all of our Windows services, as well as some startup applications, and it will also give us some recommendations. And I will say that this application has so many built-in safeguards that I don't think you can screw up your computer unless you want to. With that being said, let's get into the software right now. Again, links for the website will be down in the description, so please go down there and check that out. When you click on the web page, it will bring you up on this main home page. There are two different versions of this application. You can either download the installation file for the application, or there is a portable version as well that will just sit in a folder on your desktop, and then you can run the application when you want, and there's nothing to install on your PC. So I'm sure everybody knows how to download and install an application. If you wanna use the download and installation version, you're gonna click right here on the home page. For those of you who don't wanna install anything on your PC, but wanna run the portable version, let me show you where to get that. So at the very top, we're gonna to see the products and services tab. We're just gonna click there. And then we're gonna go down to System Utilities. Once on this page, you'll also note that there are two different versions of the application. I'm only gonna be going over the free version today, and I may cover the paid version in the future. Once you're on this page, you wanna scroll all the way to the bottom to get to the portable file, where you see System Requirements. Underneath of that, we have Program Details, and then we have Downloads. We're gonna download the portable zip folder. All right, so once this finishes, we can then click on that file. Once the unzipping program opens, we can then click the Extract To button and pick where you would like to extract it to. I'm just gonna choose the desktop, hit OK, and it will now put that folder right on my desktop for us. Okay, so before we go any further, there is one caveat to using this application. This application should be fine with most antivirus programs, but if you are using the ESET Smart Security, you're gonna be getting dinged a lot because of the registry cleaner that is included with this application. I don't recommend using the registry cleaner, and again, when you click on it, it's gonna bring up a pop-up to tell you to not use it. So if you are using the ESET Smart Security, I'm gonna show you how to get around the annoying pop-ups that you're gonna incur when you try to run this application. So the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do 
is click on the setup down here on the left. Once you click that, at the very top, you're gonna to see computer protection. You're gonna left click on that and it will open up all of your options here. At the very top where it says real-time file system protection, you're gonna click on the drop-down cog to the right and then you're gonna go down to edit exclusions. Once you're here, you're gonna head down to the add button and then we're gonna go over here to path. We're gonna click on the three little dots. Here, we're gonna choose our C drive. Hit the drop down there. We're gonna then go down to program files 86. Then from here, we're gonna go down and locate the Pegasun folder. Here, we can hit the drop down there, hit the drop down on system utilities, and then you will left click and highlight the system utilities exe file. You can hit OK, and that will add that to your list of exclusions, and that will populate right here. Once that is complete, you can hit the OK button, and it will most likely give you another pop-up just to confirm that. According to the developer, this is only an issue on the ESET Smart Security. If you are having an issue with your antivirus, please let me know down in the comments of what antivirus software you're using and what error message you're getting up on the screen so that I can let the developer know. You could also shoot them an email through the website. All right, so now what we're gonna do is move on to the tutorial of the application itself. Because I have the application installed on my system, I'm just gonna run the installed application. On the first time launching the application, you will most likely be prompted to go through a tutorial about how to use the application. I do highly recommend that you take that tutorial and it will give you a better insight of what can be accomplished by using this app. What I'm gonna show you now are my favorite uses for this application. Again, we're not gonna have full use unless you pay for the licensed version. So the first thing that you would wanna do, over here on the right hand side, we have the quick tools menu. So we're just gonna run through these real quick and the first one is the clean your PC. So we're gonna go ahead and give that a left click we are not gonna to touch any of these checked boxes over here on the left-hand side. Again, if you do happen to check some things, it will most likely bring up a pop-up and say, hey, it's not a good idea to check those. At the very bottom, underneath of all of these, we also have a Windows Disk Cleanup checkbox as well. This application is going to analyze and clean much more than the factory standard Windows Disk Cleanup software does but we can also incorporate the Windows Disk Cleanup in the Pegasun PC Cleaner. And it is recommended to do that. Anything that the Pegasun Cleaner doesn't get, the Windows Disk Cleaner will. Now we did go through this at the very beginning of the video, but I'm still gonna go ahead and check that box. We can then hit the Analyze button. It will then analyze all of the junk files that we can get rid of. And as you can see, we have 5.62 gigabyte. Now, another thing to note that there are some files that are necessary files and not be deleted. So after you run the clean program, which we'll do right now, once the software is finished, you may find that if you go to the analyze button again, it may show that there are files that can be deleted. And most of these files are needed files in the system and are not recommended to delete. So this PC cleaner will not delete those files. So I just wanna let you know that if you hit the analyze button once it's done cleaning and go, hey, I still have stuff here to be deleted and you clean it again and then it's still there. So that's why is because they are needed files for Windows. Now this process can take a little bit. So we're gonna allow this to finish. Once it does, I'll bring you guys back. All right, so that just finished up. And again, if I go down and hit the analyze button, You'll see here that I have 4.65 gigabyte left that it says are junk files to get deleted. Again, no matter how many times I clean that, it will always have 4.65 gig. Yours may be different, so don't be worried if you do see that. Now that we're all finished here, we can go up and hit the X button. We're done with that. The next one down on the list is the boot PC startup. How this will work is we can check either of the three boxes here at the top. So we can either pick user choice, programs that are not needed, or things we should just disable completely. So what we will do then is just check the boxes we wanna use. And then at the bottom, we'll just hit scan items. Because I've already done this, you're not gonna see anything that's gonna show up on my screen. But for anything that should be marked as should disable, 
it's going to be highlighted in red. Anything that's going to be not needed will be highlighted in gray. It will automatically untick the box for you, so you don't have to physically go in there and untick any of those boxes. Once you're done with that and you go through all of them and just make sure there's nothing else that you want to disable, you would then go down and hit the apply button and it will apply these settings on your next startup. Now, one of the other cool features about this is that it also allows us to do a delayed startup. So if there is an application here, but you don't want it to start up right away because it slows down your PC boot time, then you can also choose a delayed startup. And then you can come back over to the boost startup items, select the item that you want, right click on it, and then you can hit delay this item. Again, once you're done with that, make sure that you hit the apply button. All right, so we're done with the boost startup. We can go ahead and close out of that. The next one down that we have is the optimize PC. So we're gonna left click on that one. And this part of the program is what is going to help optimize your background services for Windows. At the very beginning, we went over a program called MS Config, and I showed a little workaround if you wanted to turn off any services that may apply to any other applications other than Windows. And one of the things that I told you to do is to check the box that is going to not allow you to turn off any Windows services. This application is going to optimize all of those background Windows services for you. So let me show you how this is gonna work. If for any reason you find that, hey, I don't like the optimization, something's not working right, you can always revert back to default, which is right over here. If you click on the default, again, here's the pop-ups, it's gonna tell you that it will revert your services back to the default state it was originally, do you want to revert to the default settings? So if there's anything that could harm your PC or change it dr drastically, it's going to have a pop-up to kind of let you know what's going on here. And then you can make your decision to go ahead or uh, I'm going to turn around. So for the optimization, we have, again, three different options. Personally, I chose the maximum option and I've been using this for a little while now. And I'm glad to report that I have no issues with my PC. Again, if you're unsure about using this, you can always check on the safe box. So for now, I'm gonna do that and I wanna show you what's gonna happen here. So we're gonna go down and hit the optimize. Now that's gonna show us all the different services that we can either turn on or turn off. Now, because I've already chosen maximize, it's now gonna probably want to turn a lot of these services back on again. But it's not just gonna turn on these services, it's gonna make the determination whether we want to turn it on automatically or should we turn it on manually. Now I think that is really cool here because as you saw at the very beginning of the video when I showed you that workaround, it's a lot of work to go in and change each of these in either into manual or automatic. So this is gonna do it for you. If you want the change to take effect, you're gonna make sure that the box is ticked over here. And then it will tell you what it currently is set to and what the new value will be set to. So if you do not want to make that change and you see something here, you go, no, nah, I don't wanna turn that on or off. Then you can just untick the box and then you would just hit the optimize button once you have all the boxes either checked or unchecked, whichever you'd like. Now again, for me, I'm not going to go through this, but I am gonna show you one thing that you're not gonna to want to turn off. So let me exit out of this real quick. I'm gonna tick on the maximum, and then I'm gonna go down to optimize. If you are using this for Microsoft Flight Simulator, and most likely everybody watching this video is using it for Microsoft Flight Sim, when you select the maximize option, it's gonna to wanna to turn off the Xbox features and not only turn them off, but if you take a look over here, what it's currently set at, I've set these to manual. It's actually gonna to wanna to disable these features, meaning they cannot be turned on. So for Microsoft Flight Simulator, heavily relies on Xbox now. So we want to make sure that you do not turn off the Xbox applications. So you can just come in here and untick those Xbox applications. As you can see, I have a couple other things here that have popped up for me. So I'm just gonna leave those two boxes ticked 
and then I'm going to hit the optimize button. That will optimize everything for us. We're done. We can hit the close. And again, if you do find an issue or something just isn't working right, then I would highly recommend to check off the safe box and then again go down and hit optimize. But make sure that it does not turn any of the Xbox applications off or services. The rest of these below are to be used with the paid application, but there is one other thing that I want to show everybody. Over here in the toolbox, it's also got a bunch of neat features here that we can utilize. Down here in the other, we can scan and repair this PC. I highly recommend to do that. So the Pegasus PC repair is going to scan and repair any bad sectors of your hard drive on the PC. So again, this is very simple to use. We will go down and hit scan and repair. Again, another pop-up shows up to let us know that this process is going to take a little while. And are you sure you want to continue? So we're going to hit yes. And you're just going to allow this to finish. And once it's done, I'll bring everybody back and we'll go through the next process. Oh, but one thing to note, once this does start, it is highly recommended that you allow it to finish. Do not exit out of the application. Make sure you allow it to finish and do what it needs to do. All right, so everything has completed. Again, another pop-up. We're going to hit OK, and we can now exit out of the application. Now, one of the other things I told you that this application does have is a registry cleaner. And I'm going to show you what happens if you click on the registry cleaner. We have a message here that's going to let us know that Pegasun has decided that consumers should not be using a registry cleaner, even if it's safe. The risk of registry instability outweighs the benefits of minimal performance gains. Therefore, we have decided to discontinue our registry cleaner. And then it'll say at the bottom here, if you're an advanced user, you may ignore this warning. Do you still want to open the registry cleaner? So again, unless you're trying to physically harm your computer, it's hard to mess up here. So we're going to hit no. We don't want to open it. Above that, we have the disk defrag. And we went over this earlier in the video. If you're using an SSD, you do not want to use the disk defrag. Above that, we have the browser booster. This is something for the paid version. But there is one last thing that I want to go over, and that is the tune-up computer. So if we left click on this, this piece of the software will allow us to optimize everything on our PC that hasn't already been optimized. So if there is anything that's available for optimization, it will be listed here and it'll show you that it's not optimized. And then you're just gonna go down and tick on the optimize button and it will then make all the necessary changes. If you're unsure of how to use any of these side applications within the Pegasun Systems Utilities, over on the left, there's always a how to and a help section. So I highly recommend to check those out if you have any questions about the application. Once you're done here, we can exit out of that. And that pretty much takes care of everything that this application, well, at least for the free version of the application, can do for you. One thing I do not recommend for you to do, and again, I'm only saying this for the Microsoft Flight Sim users, I do not recommend to click on the one-click system maintenance. The reason for that is, if I open up the configuration, if we go down to the one-click maintenance, you're going to see here that it says Pegasun Service Manager. Most likely, this is going to be checked as maximum optimization. If you were to run the one-click maintenance under maximum optimization, Remember, I showed you that if you click maximum in the background services, it's going to turn off and disable your Xbox applications. So in saying that, I highly discourage any Microsoft Flight Sim users for clicking the one click maintenance. And I recommend that you just do all of this manually yourself. This way you can choose what you wish to do or not do to your system. So that's going to wrap us up with the tutorial on the Pegasun systems utility. If you have any questions about it, post them down below in the comment section and let me know your results from using this application. You want to make sure that you restart your PC at this point. And that's actually going to wrap us up for today's video. If anybody has any questions, post them down below in the comment section and I will get right back to you.
If you haven't done so, make sure to hit that subscribe, tick that little bell, and smash on that thumbs up button. To all my flight simmer friends around the world, I hope this helped speed you up. Keep the blue side up, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching, everybody.